Happy holidays, Guam. I'm Jason Salas here, and we are at the Department of Civil Defense and Homeland Security in Agana Heights, joining you once again to brief you on exactly what is going on with the weather. If you haven't heard by now, there is a tropical depression. That's what it is right now. Not necessarily a tropical storm right now. Uh, the potential we have heard, it does have um, the strength and the intensity as it has sped up overnight to possibly become something worse, maybe by Friday. But as far as Guam is concerned, uh, the formation now known as Tropical Depression, Man Yi, is expected to pass between Guam and Yap. Now that is way to the southeast of us sometime uh, Thursday morning. So how will this affect our Thanksgiving Day, our holiday? Uh, there are many hundreds, if not thousands, of your fellow Guamanians who are going to be descending way down there in um, the Guam, the island's capital of Hagania. They are going to be doing the annual Thanksgiving Day lunch. We're going to help the less fortunate. How will that impact them? Uh, we heard from National Weather Service uh, officials yesterday as they were saying they just to be on the safe side do not try and have um, Thanksgiving Day parties outside just to be safe we have heard that the storm as of yesterday um, it's more wind than rain so it could be there um, could be very very strong gusts um, and we're about ready to take you in and find out the very latest with what is now known as tropical depression man Yi, with Guam remaining at the current moment of condition of readiness level three. Now, that just means that you probably want to go out, um, begin to secure um, any loose debris around the house. Uh, you should already have a ample supply of water. You should have enough batteries um, if you want to have some canned food in the case that uh, situation gets worse. Remember, uh, we did put out the advisory. You can check that out on the KUM News mobile app or KUM.com. Just go to our advisory section. The tropical depression is expected to pass well south of Guam tomorrow morning, sometime maybe just like after sunup, about like 6 to 7. So we're going to take you inside the information center, see what is the very latest with tropical depression, Man Yi, and what we can expect to have for Thanksgiving. Changed. Oh, because it has to be a, uh, has to be this one. Moving. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll get started here. Uh, Medias in the back, please hold your questions until they clear out. so I can't destroy the uh, presentation. So uh, anyway, we're looking at Tropical <coughs> Storm Man Yi. That's the name of some reservoir in Hong Kong. Uh, uh, it's right now it's near Cheek Lagoon. They're getting gusts up over uh, near 40 miles an hour. It's moving northwest. This is based on warning number five. Next slide. It's a visible picture. Uh, you can see there's a line going down the middle, and that separates the visual data 
The visible data on the east side from the infrared data on the west side, that's the terminator where the sun is coming up uh, to the east. So uh, anyway, you can see the black arrow and that's pointing to near where the center was located this morning. It's pretty close to Chute Lagoon now. If I go to the next slide, that's the infrared. And again, it's just a uh, black arrow is pointing to the uh, near the center. And then if we go to the water vapor, that's the next slide. This shows the complexity of the atmosphere. This shows that the subsidence area, that's the, that's the black area, and subsidence holes indicates that the, uh, the uh, atmosphere is suppressing convection. So what, what it indicates here is that it should keep the track south of, uh, south of Guam and the CNMI, uh, uh, and it should move somewhere between Guam and Yap. So we'll keep an eye on that because the orientation has changed just a little bit. It was northeast southwest, now it's more east west. So uh, if we go to the next slide, this is a high resolution picture, and you can see with the black arrow, it's uh, down somewhere in these uh, convective areas, uh, these uh, thunderstorms, and it's uh, moving past Chuuk and. Uh, so Chuuk's got an east wind now. It looks like it's moving south of them just, and it'll move past them in the next few hours. So uh, this is the Joint Typhoon Warning Center track, and then just showing the track moving between Guam and, uh, and uh, Yap. It also shows this uh, outer red ring, and that's the, uh, that's the damaging winds, and it's including Guam, so somewhere uh, including Guam, but not Rota at this time. So uh, this is our track, and you can see the blue area. This is the next slide. The blue area indicates damaging winds. Those are the 39 mile per hour winds. The gray area, the destructive winds. Those are the 58 mile per hour winds or greater. And the red area, the typhoon force winds. So sometime after it gets Near the edge of Chuuk State, we expect it to become a typhoon. And once it passes through our area, it's going to be about a Category 3 typhoon. So, uh, pretty strong uh, storm. They brought up the intensity quite a bit to uh, 50 miles per hour. This is the uncertainty uh, cone, and you can see the cone is fairly narrow, so there's a, a good bit of confidence in the the track but the you can see the stipled area represents that error plus the uh, damaging winds so th that error could take the damaging winds up to near Saipan and Tinian so this morning at 7 a.m. the system was located at 6.5 north latitude 151.8 east longitude at 65 miles south of uh, Chuuk uh, Lagoon, 675 miles southeast of Guam, 690 miles southeast of Rona, 725 miles southeast of Saipan and Tinian. It was moving toward the northwest at 23 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. We want to make sure that that's really... We had a pretty good idea that once it started moving out of the tropic, out of uh, the tropics, once it organized, it was going to move fairly rapidly. This is really rapidly, and so uh, we're, uh, we're, we're assessing the continuity between the uh, position uh, estimates uh, to see if uh, it actually is moving this fast. But it's forecast to move on a more west-northwest track. It's moving northwest right now. With uh, similar forward speed, it should pass between Guam uh, and Yap on Thursday. That's tomorrow, so uh, looks like late morning. Uh, early afternoon. The uh, current intensity, 50 miles per hour sustained wind, gusts to 60 miles per hour. Damaging winds are extending out to 75 miles. That's going to grow as the system intensifies and as it moves northward, because as, as it moves northward, it's going to start interacting with the, with the mid-latitude uh, systems, the high pressure system to the north, that's going to what we call increase the pressure gradient. The pressure gradient is the change in pressure over a certain distance. 
And that's what drives the winds. So the peripheral winds are going to pick up. Uh, CPA 160 miles southwest uh, Thursday, late Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon. The key thing is it's predicted to be a category three typhoon as it moves between Guam and Yap. Was moving closer to Yap, now it's moving closer to Guam, so uh, I'll have to keep a close watch on it. So I'm going to move this. This could be uh, 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 actually uh, Thursday morning, and uh, it lasts into uh, the late afternoon or the, uh, the evening. Uh, we don't expect uh, destructive winds right now and or typhoon force winds. We're looking at 35 to 40 miles per hour, even a little bit stronger, maybe 40 to 45 miles per hour with just about 50 miles per hour. These are low in tropical storm conditions and uh, we're looking for uh, probably 30 mile per hour winds up in the Saipan and Tinian and maybe up to 40 miles per hour in uh, Rota. It's going to be close for uh, Rota. Next uh, slide will show the uh, onset of winds for Guam. And it's actually got the winds coming in in the morning and lasting through into the evening. Uh, usually, usually they uh, bring in the winds uh, or pick up the winds a little bit soon, too soon. And right now what we want to do is assess that 23 mile per hour speed of movement not likely to move any faster than that, but it could move more slowly than that. As a result, we'll be looking at a warning, a tropical storm warning, either at 11 o'clock or 2 o'clock this afternoon, depending on the information <coughs> that, uh, that we can glean over the next few hours. So, uh, The seas are going to be uh, fairly uh, large, and we could see one foot of inundation. The worst conditions are going to be on the southeast, the south coast, uh, the east coast of the island, especially the areas that are open to the ocean. So, uh, Talafofo, uh, Inaraha, and uh, Marizo, although the storm, the inundation probably is going to be more uh, affecting uh, uh, Inaraha and Talafofo, our EPAN area and uh, maybe up to Pago Bay. So uh, anyway, we have a uh, pretty good tides out there. So uh, we can see uh, easily a, a foot of inundation down there at high tides. Rainfall, we beefed up the rainfall a little bit, three to five inches during passage. More if the speed of motion decreases or the center moves more northward and less if the motion increases or the center moves farther southward. The other thing that we would look at, come on in. The other thing we will be looking at with three to five inches of rain, uh, we might have to issue some flash flood, uh, flash flood watch later tonight, and maybe some warnings. Warnings uh, last only a few hours. The watch can last a, a half a day or a day. So. We go to the next slide. So we're looking at marginal damaging winds expected. The sustained 40, 45 miles per hour gusts to 55 and showers. This will blow down dead limbs and coconuts and uh, a few green uh, palm fronds, but very light materials. Those uh, those campaign signs probably are going to get blown down. Uh, tarps and canopies need to be well secured or taken down. Strong rip currents, people should stay out of the waters uh, by tomorrow, and uh, this is likely going to disrupt the barge traffic between Guam and the Northern Marianas. We tell you to plan for one category higher. Right now, we'll go to the Category B tropical storm, which has winds from 50 to 73 miles per hour, and the gusts could be 65 up to uh, over 90 miles per hour. So, uh, so anyway, many dead limbs and the green uh, limbs and coconuts blown down. This is, will affect uh, power lines. Some of the power lines could go down, but mostly, uh, mostly uh, it's not going to affect the, uh, the uh, primary lines. Light materials, signs can be blown around and down. Tarps and canopies need to be well secured or taken down. 
people have to stay out of the water. These rip currents become deadly, and uh, this would disrupt barge traffic between Guam and Northern Marianas, not only for a couple of days, especially with a Category 3 uh, uh, category three storm if it moves any, any closer to us. So what would cause us, if it moves closer to us, that would uh, increase the wind speed. So right now, we just want to make sure that the uh, computer models have a good handle on the, uh, the track forecast, that is the directional forecast. It's not so bad if there, there's two kinds of errors. There's the cross track error, that's the error that the track can come closer and get farther away. And then there's the long track error. That has to do with the timing. The long track error we can live with because it just delays it getting here and gets, gets it here a little bit sooner. So uh, that's, what we're, uh, that's what we're trying to uh, ascertain now is uh, how well the models are handling that. Generally, for the last several storms, they've done a really good job. So currently, with a tropical storm, warnings for Chuuk State, some uh, warnings and uh, watches for Yap State. Uh, we, we, were in a, we set a watch yesterday at 2 p.m. and you all are in uh, Core 3. We're going to closely monitor everything, but we will likely issue a tropical storm warning later today, maybe at 11 a.m., probably not later than 2 p.m., but uh, we'll, once I get back, we'll take uh, the guys over there are taking a, a real close look at it. And we'll get all the data together and, uh, and uh, figure out a couple of things. One, what we're confident it's located and uh, what the past motion has been and how that would affect the uh, forecast track. And then uh, we'll take a look at the uh, latest information from the Typhoon Warning Center and then we'll make our decision. Any questions? So, just tell you that uh, we'll, we'll be updating these things uh, every three hours. Uh, new information is going out. Uh, eventually, it'll get within radar range until the radar goes down. But at least it'll get within radar range, and we'll, uh, we'll be able to track it with radar as well as a satellite. I don't think we'll have any trouble tracking it with satellite, especially once it gets a uh, visible eye. And then uh, we'll we'll keep a lookout for. Uh, Changes in the motion, any erratic movement, and uh, more rapid intensification. So that's where we stand right now. And uh, so we'll uh, we'll let you know as soon as we can whether we're going to go to a warning at 11 o'clock today or delay until 2 o'clock. I, I think we're probably going to go to a warning unless something really drastic changes from the current forecast situation. Any questions? Well, we'll wait for the questions. Any questions the media has, I'll be glad to answer them outside uh, as soon as I get out there. Okay, once again, everybody, you are watching live. If you were just joining us, we are here at the Guam Homeland Security Office and Office of Civil Defense in Agana Heights. We're about three levels down, 30 feet underground, and that was just Chip Guard, our good friend from the National Weather Service, getting you up to speed on what is the latest with now, what's now known as a Tropical Storm uh, Mangi. He was actually saying that that word, Man, I know um, we've seen a lot of the Facebook comments, and some people are like, you know, we've had typhoons called, you know, um, Pamela, uh, Karen, Omar, and then we've got these other names. Menyi is actually a reservoir, as Chip was saying, in Hong Kong. So that is the genesis of this name. Chip's going to come out. We're going to get some more information from him. But as far as the weather formation itself, um, it has sped up considerably. And if you don't know anything about storms, my friends, that is a good thing because the storm basically doesn't have time to sit and stew to get ornery um, and to intensify. So it's moving at, he was saying right now, at about 23 miles per hour. That is a very fast moving storm taking all things into consideration. Um, that means that uh, the storm right now, as Chip was saying, it was originally tracked as of last night to go between Guam and Yap, and that is way to the southeast of us. He said it's veered a little bit more away from Yap and a little bit more towards Guam. Um, the system has intensified a little bit, and as he was saying, as it does pass through our island as well as Yap, um, it does have the potential to become a fairly strong storm, possibly even um, damaging. I've got Jenna Blass here 
from <laughs> always on her phone, Jenna. I, I, I would not want your mobile bill. <laughs> That's yeah. all of us on our phones right now. Yeah, your WhatsApp is probably insane. <laughs> um, so it's been uh, pretty busy here. Um, of course, the main concern for everybody, um, as far as Guamanians go, everybody was like, oh man, you know, like it's a slow week. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, Chip was actually emphasizing the fact that the southeast portion of the island, so you've got the villages like Inaraha and Talafofo, Meleso, um, they could be impacted the most directly, and there's going to be a lot of wind, correct? That's correct. Um, he did discuss that uh, we're looking at some coastal inundation towards those southern eastern areas, Ipan, Talafofo, um, so definitely high, high seas, and we're looking for hazardous seas. But they did talk about um, some wind distributions of 40 to 45 miles per hour. We gust up to 55 miles per hour, which can be pretty devastating. So we're looking at um, making sure that you're securing your tarps. If you have not secured them properly, you're going to want to take down those tarps and canopies. So we're, not, we're talking about Thanksgiving. So if you have outdoor, um, act, outdoor activities planned for Thanksgiving, you want to start making those plans to move those indoors, uh, making sure that you're not um, outdoors during this, this type of weather. Okay, now Jen and I are trying not to laugh. I'm, I'm sorry. Really yeah, because, well, because she is a proper Southern girl, and I know you guys, you guys throw awesome parties down there. Everybody looks forward to Thanksgiving. You know, on Guam, you know, traditionally people do Thanksgiving for dinner. Out here we like to do it like lunch. Some people do All it like mid-morning. Evening. Right. Yeah. Um, but, of course, in the South, you know, people have these, like, it's big family parties. Everybody come down. What's mine is yours and everything. So people do put up tarps, and they set up, you right. know, places for parking and everything right. um, not a lot of indoor right. in-house in parties and everything like that so this might be an interesting Thanksgiving where people may have to shift their accommodations a little bit right so just start having those secondary plans make sure that you have a backup plan because um, we're gonna be putting out more information as the day goes on um, we'll have a better idea of what's going to happen and we might be see some changes in conditions of readiness so mm -hmm. be prepared for those of course at condition of readiness too we remind the community to stay indoors so mm -hmm. that would be one of the um, one of the advisories um, but for now just have those secondary plans in place if you do have tarps and canopies that are outside make sure they're safely secured if if they're not safely secured, you're going to want to take them down completely. Um, Chip did mention about those political signs and those um, those temporary signs. Those will need to become to come down because those damaging winds could definitely lift those in higher winds. Ah, uh, yes. Well, you know, and remember, everybody, just because you may take your tarps down or you may secure, you know, the the canopies and thing. Here's Chip right now, but I was going to say, um, you don't also probably want to be. Chip was saying this last night. You don't want to be outside once the winds really start to pick up, and they will start to pick up tomorrow morning and maybe last, as Chip was saying, maybe through the evening. You don't want to get hit in the face with velvet cake. <laughs> Once that really takes off. And velvet cake is great for Thanksgiving. And Chip, it has been too long. I think uh, four weeks since we last spoke. Could be. At least, <laughs> at least four weeks. Okay. The, the timeless, the, the intrepid. Uh, the, the, he, you, you fear no storm, but you, you've tracked many of them and everything. Um, how does this one shape up you know, relative to what we've been seeing maybe in the last two or three months? Well, I respect all storms. So uh, the, uh, uh, we're keeping a very close watch on this storm. It's, right now it's uh, very close to Chuk Lagoon. And uh, it'll be heading toward the, uh, right now it's heading to the northwest. We expect it to take a little more of west-northwest track. But that's going to bring it between Guam and Yap sometime tomorrow. And uh, noonish maybe. And, uh, and uh, as it does that, of course, the, uh, the winds are going to pick up. Right now, it looks like we could be in the damaging wind uh, area. Uh, we set a uh, tropical storm watch yesterday at 2 o'clock, and we probably go to a tropical storm warning uh, later on this morning or early this afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be putting out advisories every three hours, and it would behoove people to pay attention because things change with these warnings. So, uh, so people should uh, should. Uh, Stay up to date on the warnings, especially for the next uh, 12 hours or so, and uh, we'll have a pretty good handle on what this uh, storm's going to do. As it passes between uh, Yap and Guam, it's going to become a pretty good typhoon. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking at a Category 3, so they're looking at 120 mile an hour winds. But that's going to be about 160 miles away from us. Right. So, I, I was going to say, just for people to put it into yeah. context, once it passes between Guam and Yap, that's a pretty, a pretty good distance to the southeast of us, or not directly over us. Right. So 160 miles southeast of us. And that, but we could see some 40, 45 mile per hour winds, maybe some higher gusts from that. So uh, that's what we're keeping an eye on. We want to make sure it's going to stay close to that track. Uh, if it gets here a little sooner or a little later that's not nearly as uh, as uh, important as it staying on that that uh, that track uh, that direction and uh, motion so uh, the other thing is uh, we'll keep an eye on the intensity uh, as well and make sure that it's not going to be stronger than it is or it's not going to move significantly closer so uh, 
Right now we're in a tropical storm watch. We anticipate to go to a tropical storm warning sometime later today. And uh, if it becomes more of a threat, we may have to go to a typhoon watch. So mm -hmm. we don't really want to do that, but if, if we have to, we'll do that. Yeah, and Jenna was just saying, you know, um, it has not been determined yet. So, you know, don't lock this down in your, you know, your Google calendar or anything like that. But if the condition of readiness is increased, going from two to three. I know mathematically that makes no sense, but if we go from two to three, we will let you know on all the uh, properties of KUM. Uh, chip, three to two. Or three to two, there you go. See, I told you I'm, I'm terrible at math. Um, I'm gonna let you, um, one more question before I let you go, because I, I know you throw some awesome Thanksgiving parties and you gotta secure your, your canopies and everything like that, but when we spoke yesterday, you said that the storm at that point was decidedly more wind than rain. Um, what stuck out to me about your presentation was you said that we're now gonna expect a little bit of the wet stuff, right? Well, we are, uh, we've added a couple of inches of rain to the uh, storm total so there may be a period of time when we actually have to issue a uh, flash flood watch and maybe even a flash flood warning for a few hours so uh, as the system approaches we'll have a better handle on how much rain we're actually going to get and we may actually have to uh, issue uh, a flash flood warnings for certain areas of the island since this is going to impact the south end of the island probably more than the north end of the island uh, we, we do tend to see a, a lot of uh, flash flood conditions down in the south end of the island, where it's very mountainous. Okay. Well, everybody out there, please make sure, by no means should you stop cooking. Get that stuffing ready. Start making the turkey tail, because that, that stuff is really, really good. But, however, you do not want to be like outside, as Chip was saying. Please make sure to secure your tarps, your canopies, everything like that, because it will get windy, especially for our friends in the southeast. Chip. Happy holiday to you, my friend. Yeah, same there. All right, always happy a pleasure. Happy Thanksgiving. And happy Thanksgiving to you. So that's going to do it for our live heavy weather briefing. Our coverage on Facebook Live continues, and we will have the very latest to, with you, for you on Tropical Storm and Manyi as the day continues. So thanks so much, everybody. Please stay safe.